Salvin, 11 minutes to 6 o'clock. You've probably heard of the Wingfield series of play and it's, uh, plays, and if so, you, you'll probably recognize our next guest. Dan Needles is the playwright. The series of plays are about a fictional man who decides to swap life on Toronto's Bay Street for life on the farm. Needles is back in London this weekend with singer-songwriter Ian Bell, and he'll be performing True Confessions on the Ninth Concession at the Aeolian Hall, and Dan Needles is on the line. Good afternoon. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for joining us. So tell us a bit about what True Confessions from the Ninth Concession is all about. It's uh, an evening of stories and songs about rural Ontario. Ian does the music and I tell the stories. So Ian was raised in Waterford on the north shore of Lake Erie, and I came from the sand hills of Dufferin County up near Orangeville. Mm. So the stories are about the old farm neighborhood that we both grew up in. So it's kind of a a crop tour of Persephone Township. Mm. And this grew out of your book, right? Of the same title? Uh, It it. I, I just did a new book uh, two years ago, which captures all my magazine writing over the last 25 years. But, um, if you've seen the Wingfield Farm stage plays, you'll probably remember characters like Freddie and the Squire and Don the Dairy Farmer. Those were inspired by real people I grew up with on the seventh line of Mona Township. So mm. They were very much like grandfathers and uncles to me, a terrific bunch. They're tough, practical, resourceful guys with a very dry sense of humor. So uh, I'm trying to capture what it was like hanging around those guys as a kid. Yeah. And what made you decide to, to write about them in the first place? I, I understand you were working as a, a reporter for a while, and, and that had something to do with that? Well, I wanted to be like these guys when I, if I ever grew up. There was one guy uh, next door to us, the bachelor farmer, Vernet Haddock. He lived in a fairly rough old wood frame house, and he told me that until he was 12 years old, he thought his name was Get Wood. <laughs> right, and he watched yeah. my mother trying to re- ride herd on these five kids as a single mother, and he told her, Dorothy Jane, the boys are easy. You just give them air rifles and a collie dog, and they'll raise themselves. <laughs> and, and that's what she did. So I was pretty much free-ranged on the seventh line. I bonded with these characters, and I've, I've never really left rural Ontario since. Mm. And how, how did you know they would translate so well from, from these newspaper columns to, to a book and then onto the, sta- the stage? Well, it was all a huge surprise. I... Uh, I thought it was a disappearing community, and I wrote the first play as kind of a hymn to a lost world. But then I found that there are farm communities all over the country, and uh, and the plays took off and have been from from Victoria to to uh, Prince Edward Island, and and uh, uh, I I discovered that the the farm community is alive and well. Mm. And I understand that you come from a, a theater family, and uh, and did they play a role in, in you eventually taking up these stories and, and uh, translating them for the stage? Well, uh, storytelling uh, performance was part of, uh, part of my family growing up. My dad was a, an actor at the Stratford Festival. My mother had her own CBC radio show yeah. in the 50s, and so... I ended up working for an insurance company, and my parents were pretty upset about that. <laughs> they thought, you know, what, what's this blue suit? Uh, it's just a costume. Why? When are you going to come back and do something worthwhile? <laughs> so I f- found my way back to the theater. And uh, my mother introduced me to Ian Bell uh, probably 30 years ago, and we ended up performing on stage a lot of times over the last uh, 25 years. And this show just suddenly came together. When I went out on the book tour, like his kids have left home, mine have left home, and mm. we have a lot more free time. So Ian helped start the Vinyl Cafe on CBC mm. 20 years ago, and mm. he's played every hall in southern Ontario. He tells stories, too, so we had to make a deal. I try not to sing too much, and he tries not to talk too much. <laughs> so having known him for so long and having worked with him before, I imagine there's such a natural dynamic between the two of you. How would you describe that creative dynamic? We kind of complete each other's sentences, and uh, uh, he makes me laugh. I love the uh, he has a, he he looks at rural Ontario through the same quirky lens that I do. Mm. So he has a song about the Burgessville mammoth, 
We do a shipwreck song with a happy ending. That's very rare. You can't get that anywhere else but the Aeolian Hall on Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> what is it about that friction between urban life and rural life that still remains so interesting for you? Well, we're a very young country. Uh, many of us grew up, uh, you know, we still have living memory of the old rural community. And it uh, influences the way we talk. And that's I, I, I deal with this uh, in the show. These voices still... Um, they, they're still reflected in the way we talk, and farmer thinking ha, uh, still has an enormous influence on our on our lives. But um, so the the Aeolian Hall is a great place for jazz, but mm. they they always have something new. It's um, uh, I just love that hall. It's it's by far the best concert hall in the city, and I think it's one of the best in the province. Mm. The acoustics are terrific, and there's not a bad seat in the house. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's it's a treasure for sure, as they, far as venues great, go. They got great lake swimmers coming later in the month, and uh, Rachel Beck, the songwriter from PEI, she's your CBC top twenty. So there you go. All the, all, all the big the big names come to the Aeolian. It's amazing who they get. Yeah, yeah. So what can audiences expect from your shows this weekend there? I think it's a, a chance to just forget about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, for a few hours and uh, step back in time <clears throat> and uh, have a good laugh and, and listen to some great music. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, Dan. Uh, have uh, some great shows this weekend here, and, and I appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for this. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. That's Dan Needles, author and playwright for True Confessions from the Ninth Concession. He'll be performing alongside singer-songwriter and his longtime friend Ian Bell. Two shows this weekend at the Aeolian Hall in London.